This that Kendall swag, long talking about my soul. You feel know what I'm saying? Like, some people think that if you love God, you're just gonna be lame. Like, that ain't the case, cause I know y'all ain't lame. You know what I'm saying? So, then this song's called Real Player. If y'all wanna binge, y'all come up here. You know what I'm saying? This ain't no spectator, you know what I'm saying? Like, we just have fun. Let's play this one. Let's go. Yeah, come on. One, two, one, two, three, let's go. Real player walking through. Real players love Jesus too. Yeah, it's true. I'm from the ATL, we throw that upside down too. F-O-1s don't want no Jimmy Choo's, I keep it cool. I walk off in the spot, you know I'm shining like diamonds. Walk off in the spot, you know the hood right behind me. Go with all that capping and that juking and jiving. Fresh out the microwave, you can tell me up. I can look over the fake, I stretch my neck like an ostrich. Don't wake up to no cereal, just direct the pot. But I will trade it all just to get wisdom and knowledge. Straight from the Lord, cause I ain't going to college, you did. Real player walking through. Real player coming through, make some room, hey. Yeah. Real player coming through. Real player coming through, make some room, hey. Real player coming through. Real player coming through. Real player coming through. Real player coming through, make some room, hey. Uh, real player coming through. Real players love Jesus too, yeah, it's true. I'm a child of God, man, ain't no way I could lose. Thinking I'm a fail, use a fool, look at you. Before I leave that house, I got up. I'm dripping all these flavors like I'm walking on water. When Jesus... That's the five point six watchers. I'm a player, but that don't mean I be dogging out with. I'm a player because I'm... Five. I'm a player because I'm real. The streets won't tell you no different. I'm from East Atlanta. Oh, uh, real player coming through. Real player coming through. Make some room, hey. Real player coming through. Real player coming. Real player coming through. I'm a real player, baby. Flyer than the mayor, baby. And I love my savior, baby. Cause he the one that made us. One more time. I'm a real player, babe. Flyer than the mayor, babe. And I love my savior. Look, one more time, one more time. Real player walking through. Real player coming through. Make some room, hey. Real player coming through. Real player coming through, make some room. Real player coming through. Uh, real player coming through. Real player coming through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my boy, my, my boy. Hey, I appreciate that good. Yeah. <laughs> So look, man, I appreciate y'all. Anytime y'all call me, I'm coming. I love y'all. Listen to what they saying, man. Worship. Worship with your spirit. You feel me? Stay on the right path. And you can be fly and love God at the same time. All right? I love y'all. I appreciate y'all.
want to know what happened in service last night? Well, why weren't you there? All right. I guess I'll show you. When it says put on the whole armor of God, it's talking about the word of God. You can't live this life saying, I believe in Jesus. I believe in God. And you don't know his word. He's given us absolute mastery over every trick and over every plan of the enemy. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. All of them are saying, you can't do this. God says, you can do all things through me who strengthens you. Whose report will you believe? It don't matter how you feel. It don't matter what you're going through. Jeremiah 29, 11 is still God's plan for you, period. And the enemy wants to have you focused on what's going on around you than what's supposed to be going on in you. period but the enemy has a very uh, he's got a thing for young people because if he can stop you in your tracks in your early years then he can prevent you from walking the path that God has created for you does that make sense so when it comes to young people the enemy is very vigilant in making sure that he can distract you deceive you and suggest things to you that ultimately steer you away from God's path for you and steers you towards a path that leads to destruction. We know that the enemy has a will for your life just like God has a will for your life. God has a will for your life and his plan is to make sure that you have life and have it more abundantly. The enemy's will and plan for you is to steal, kill, and destroy you. So today we're going to dive into that. We've been talking about it for the past few weeks, and I want to make sure that we add clarity to it so that you guys can, without a shadow of a doubt, understand the enemy and his tricks. Can we turn these uh, false beats off? I'm going to be up here choking. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for being here today. I thank you that revelation knowledge is so clear that I can come this morning Speak to my mind, speak to my vocal cords, and I'm here, all of you. Holy Spirit, your perfect will be done in this service today. Holy Spirit, move through every aisle, flow through every row, and I declare that every heart in this room is good ground to sow God's word to you in this room. I declare it so. In Jesus' name we pray. All that agree said? Amen. So let's go to the scriptures. Ephesians 6. 10 through 12, New Living Translation, if we have it. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. I bet you I beat you. Ephesians 6, 10 through 12. Uh oh, they got it. Uh oh. A final word Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. 11. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all of the strategies of the devil. So during praise and worship, Constance was very transparent with you and she shared with you some things that were true stories. It, was these, these, it wasn't something that we just acted out. It was a true story. I would literally, when my kids were younger, I'm talking like four or five years old. 
Pastor Anthony was still involved in a lot of stuff that people who didn't graduate, people who don't graduate high school, people who not even thinking about their GED, people who drop out in the 10th grade. These were things that I felt like I had to do in order to get money. So my wife, who was raised in Jonesboro, <laughs> at the time Jonesboro wasn't like it is now. I ain't talking about Jonesboro South. I'm talking about Clayton County, Jonesboro, right up the street from Lovejoy, right? This was years ago when it was still predominantly a, a, a white neighborhood. She was from there, and I was from Godby Road. And when we got married, she met a side of me that she wasn't used to. You see, ladies, you know everything it is to know about a young man based off what you see and the amount of time that you have to spend time with him, right? But it's a whole nother thing when you live with him. You understand what I'm saying to you? You guys remember that. You don't know somebody until you really know them. And then when they show you who you are, you may want to believe them, okay? Anyway, that's a little side nugget for somebody out there. Uh, make some noise for all of those watching online. Uh, Norcross, Villarica, Macon. <laughs> Welcome to the family. We see you out there. Let's dive into this thing. So there would be times when my way of getting money wasn't a legal way, but when my kids came, I had calmed down a lot as far as how involved I was in partaking in the things that I was a part of. So instead of being hands-on with it, I was more the mastermind, which required me to be gone from the house a lot. And as I was gone, <clears throat> Constance would be home, 22, 23 years old, you know, cleaning up, trying to be a wife, trying to be a mother. But when we got married, she became a mother. She was a mother of two, because I had already had two children. So she embraced that and started taking it on. It was new to it. So she had to deal with that. And then me and her had a child, our first child, together. So that was Shane. And then Shane came, and she finally felt like she was able to give me something of, of, of value and of, of, of worth. And then she gave me my daughter. So this whole time, me and her were looking through pictures the other day because we're in the process of moving. And you know when you move, you go through all types of stuff. And we found this letter. We showed it to our kids. But on the letter, it was a letter. Me and her were sitting at a table. And because she had like eight, nine siblings, now she only had four, but because she had a lot of people in the house all the time, we were sitting at the kitchen table and we was writing notes to each other back and forth. So I would write something and then I'd pass it to her. And she'll write something. And she said, Constance Deanne Jones wants to be Constance Deanne Adams. And I wrote, OK, that's what's up. Well, we might as well go ahead and make it official now. I was being fresh. Anyway, she was like, what you mean? And then we going back and forth, and blah, 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 whatever. But fast forward from that time to when we finally got married, Young people always have dreams of how life is going to be. They always have, you know, when I grow up, man, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to have two kids, I'm going to have a boy and a girl. She wrote all this down. I still got it. And we're going to do this, we're going to travel. Anthony's going to fulfill the will of God for his life because she always said that I would preach even when I was a teenager. I never thought it. I never saw it. I always thought, oh, that's that Jonesboro in you, uh, you know, whatever. So I just always chumped it off, but God was really using her. Anyway, let's fast forward to the nightmare part. We get married. Pastor Anthony, she didn't know that Pastor Anthony was on cocaine, weed, alcohol, X pills, all types of stuff. She would come home and it would be a kitchen table mountains of weed on it and pills and all types of stuff and I would try and teach her how to sell drugs and teach her how to weigh and all this other stuff and she is like oh my god this is not what I thought it would be who are you 
But by this time, you know, she knew she loved me, and I knew I loved her. But we were married, so it's like, what are you going to do? You're going to go back and tell all of your friends that this isn't working out? You're going to go and tell mom and dad, hey, you guys were right. I'm not going to make it. What are you going to do? And we went back and forth with this for years. I was verbally abusive. I would treat her like she was a child and talk to her and insult her intelligence and say things to her, mainly because of the, 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 the being inebriated, but also because Pastor Anthony had issues with himself. I didn't like who I was. I was still unhappy that I didn't make it through high school. I was still unhappy that I was forced to have to work all of these labor-ready jobs, getting up 6 o'clock in the morning, going down downtown College Park, waiting in front of the labor-ready building, waiting for somebody to come and give me a construction job that only paid like $6 an hour. Felt like I was talented. Felt like I had gifts. And this is the same guy who was adopted by Dr. Dollar when I was 13 years old, well, 12 years old. Adopted by Dr. Dollar. So during the school year, I'm on Godby Road. During the summer, I'm traveling all over the world, Australia, South Africa, uh, Australia, uh, all 50 states, riding around privately, just, oh my goodness, going from ashy to classy in a matter of months. And I was exposed to a lot, and she saw that I was exposed to those things, but that made it that much more hard because Dr. Dollar was fixated on me being a man, so as much as, you know, yeah, we did little shopping sprees and things like that, but when it came down to it, he had to make me a man. So I had to learn how to get my own stuff and learn how to get the job and learn how to have some work ethic and learn how to do what's right because it's right. But see, I was foolish and I would take what I learned from him and apply it to the streets. And it was mildly successful for a minute. But internally, I had no real relationship with God. The seeds had always been planted in my heart. And the word of God is an incorruptible seed. So the seeds were there. But there was no real connection because I wasn't really seeking God. As a matter of fact, I ran from him, right, babe? I stayed away from church for about what? About three years? I didn't even come. I, I didn't even step foot on his property. I was gone. I was always high. I was always boom, 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 doing my thing or whatever. And then all of a sudden, things began to change because... I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. And all the time I was blaming my wife, I was blaming the things, oh man, it's this job, man, or you know, school was too hard for me, man. Or It wasn't that school was too hard for me, I was very smart, I was very intelligent. But I just, I, I got this infatuation with money. I wanted to have the type of money that Creflo had, but I didn't want to go through the stuff that I needed to go through in order to get to where he was. Cause you know, your man of God, Dr. Dolly used to be a janitor scrubbing toilets and doing different things like that. I didn't want to, I didn't want all that. I wanted to just, you know, I want to skip B through uh, Y, just take me to Z. Let me just hurry up and get it. I wanted the fast way of getting it. And ultimately that had me facing life in prison. But then I woke up and I saw, man, I've really been treating my wife like she was nothing. I've really been treating myself and my family like they were nothing. I say that because I wasn't there. I mean, I was there, but I wasn't there. Does that make sense? Which means I'm present in the house, but, you know, when they was like three, four, five years old, man, it was like, oh, man, you know. Constance, you got them. I don't know what to do, especially when they were babies. When they were babies, they were just like for the cute moments. Oh, woo, 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 woo. And sometimes I remember, especially with Junior, Junior was born, I'd pick him up and I'd just stare at him and be like, hey, just, you know. I'm like, this is real. This is crazy. And Constance would walk by like, uh, yeah, you got a whole child. Uh, let's go. Keep, <laughs> keep moving like... Yeah, okay, you're going to catch up now? I'm like, man, this is crazy. And I put him down and be like, where you going? I'm going to go smoke a blunt. This is crazy, man. This is ridiculous. This don't make no sense. But everything around me, I was 
on the outside strong. People was afraid of me. People didn't want to say the wrong thing to me because they didn't, they was afraid of how I reacted, but I was so full of fear. Fear of failure, fear of not being able to be successful, fear of not being able to keep the promise that I made to Constance's father, who I love dearly. When I told him, I got, he said, in the event you don't have her, send her back. I was like, oh, no, yeah, I got her. And I think I called him up on that one time, didn't I, babe? I called Mr. John and said, hey, remember what you told me? Hey, come get your daughter, bro. I can't do this, man. I'm about to go. He said, what? I'm on my way. And he came and he took his daughter and she was gone for about, what, huh? About a month. It was the worstest time of my life. I was like, bye. Closed the door. Boom. Locked the door. Went back in the house. Shoot. She had the kids with her. I was like, yeah, this is my house. I was, I was gone. A hurt little boy in a grown man's body. Because I didn't know that there was a spiritual influence behind all of the things that was happening around me. I didn't realize just how much God loves me. And because I didn't realize that, people closest to me had to suffer. God was literally showing me his love for me through my wife. She was patient, she was consistent, she wasn't judgmental. There'll be times where I would come home so sloppy drunk, I throw up on the bed, I come in the bed, throw up in the bed and she just, babe, 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 babe clean me up and wash me down and clean the bed and just disgusting. And I'd get up like, you know, she'd cook me breakfast and I'd be like, because I know I did her dirty. So I'm just expecting the worst. She done put something in my, she done put bleach in my grits. She done did something. Never did. But there was spiritual influence behind everything that was going on because Satan saw the greatness in me even though I didn't see it. And because he saw it in me, he came after me with a vengeance because he knew that once I accepted God's love for me and once I made a decision to make God first in my life and truly make him the head of my household instead of me being the head of my household, he knew it was OV because he knew there would be young people who would be able to benefit from the things that I had been through and the things that I had overcome. So what happened was I had to start changing what I was allowing to come into my mind, what I was allowing to get into my ears, what I was allowing to get into my eyes. You see, back then they had groups like Triple Six Mafia, Player Fly, Kingpin, Skinny Pimp, uh, you know, Project Pat, a whole bunch of Memphis rappers. I was, you know, I'm from Atlanta, but, you know, I listened to Outkast and them, but I was really on North Memphis, man. They, they used to have me vibing. And I would listen to that music and different things like that, and all it would do was amplify the worst in me. But see, I was a choir kid, too. My mom sung in a choir. So every time I would come to church, I would have to sit through choir practice and different things like that. So the word of God is an incorruptible seed and those songs were planted in my heart. They were planted in my life. So I started really listening to those things, just like Constance was explaining. She had to listen to something different because either she would listen to what God had to say or she would be dumbfounded and overwhelmed with hurt by all of the poison that I spit out of my mouth towards her through every lie, through every, you, 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 you understand what I'm saying. Ladies, y'all understand. How, ladies, raise your hand if you've ever been lied to by somebody you love. Yep, 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 yep. She said, ooh, you just don't know, Pastor Ed. ooh. She said, I'm telling you, period. But I, I, I get it. But I, I need you to follow me on this because everything that I'm describing to you, I can articulate now an answer to help shine a light on the enemy for who he is. 
so that when these things begin to happen, I don't care if you're on a basketball team, I don't care if you're in a relationship with somebody, I don't care if it's with your parents, I'm going to show you how this whole process works. Are you ready to take this journey with me? If you're ready to take this journey with me, make some noise. Yeah. All right, let's go. So, Ephesians 6, 10 through 12, it says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Listen, he's given us the power to use against the influence of the enemy, but not people. It's important to be able to identify the enemy when he's present so that you can use your God-given authority against him and not people. Proverbs 18 and 21. Proverbs 18 and 21. Put that up for me. I'll get it. Let's flow. They got it? Proverbs 18 and 21. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I tell my kids all the time, hey, watch what you say. You know, watch what you say. Watch what you allow to come out your mouth, because whether you believe it or not, God has given you authority. And when you open your mouth and you speak a thing, you either speak life towards a thing or you speak death towards a thing. You understand what I'm saying? I'm showing you how powerful your words are and what you say are. Are you using your words to build people up or are you using, using your words to tear people down? Does that make sense? Matthew 12 and 34. Matthew 12 and 34. It talks about how out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you follow me on this journey, you'll see life and death is in the power of the tongue, but it's from out of the abundance of the heart. Remember, I share with you, I always use uh, this example when it comes to the heart. The heart is like a what? An incubator. And what does an incubator do? There you go. It promotes growth at what? At an accelerated rate. Most babies who are born prematurely go into an incubator and it promotes growth at an accelerated rate. Likewise, the heart is like an incubator. Whatever you allow to get into your heart is going to promote growth. So if you allow evil things to get into your heart, it's going to grow at an accelerated rate. If you put the word of God in your heart, it's going to grow at an accelerated rate. Does that make sense? Proverbs 4, 23. It's a heart issue. What are you listening to? What are you exposing yourself to? What are you watching? Who are you listening to? What, are you, what, what music are you putting in your ears? You understand? Proverbs 4, 23, it says, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Your heart. It's an incubator. It promotes growth at an accelerated rate. Whatever I constantly watch, whoever I constantly pay attention to, those things are going into my eye gates, they're going into my ear gates, and they're getting into my what? But before they get to my heart, where do they go? You're thinking about it. You're thinking about it. You're considering it. You understand? See, your mind is the enemy's playground. He wants to suggest all types of things to you to get you to start considering this. Did you consider that maybe none of these dudes really like you and they just look at you as a sex object? Or fellas, did you ever consider the maybe the fact that you're just a, uh, if you're an athlete, maybe you're just a, a, a rec ball player. You're never intended to go to the NBA. Or, you know, uh, to that young lady, did you ever consider the fact that your mom, your dad left you because your mom was whacking just to be honest, you're whack too. Those are suggestions that come from the enemy. Do you ever think that, you know, hey, your, your, your mom and dad like your brothers and sisters more than they like you? Did you ever consider the fact that, you know, and this is the, these are the things that the enemy put on you. Did you ever consider the fact that the fact that your mom is on drugs is because of you? You're the reason? And then every time whoever's caring for you now gets upset with you or they get uh, irate with you or they, they're frustrated with you, uh, that... Yeah, and they say things like, boy, you make me want to drink. See, there it is again. He suggests things to you. You understand what I'm saying to you? And what happens is you begin to think about those things. Think about those things. And as you're thinking about them, 
other corresponding things begin to take place to validate that initial thought that you have. Now, all of a sudden, you've meditated on it so much, where does it go? Into your heart. And your heart begins to promote what? Growth at an accelerated rate. And the Bible, as I just showed you, says that the issues of life come from the heart. Does that make sense? Is everybody with me on this journey so far? The issues of life come from your heart. What are you exposing yourself to? What are you feeding yourself? Young people all around the world, all of them have a set of what? Headphones. <laughs> and if they don't, could you buy me some headphones? Earpods? They want earpods. Most of them just want to look like, you know, you know, whatever. It's like it says you're somebody when you have some earpods. Yeah. But what you listen to on those earpods, now here's the thing. I don't just, you know, my, my playlist could go from Fred Hammond and Dietrich Haddon to, to uh, you know, J. Cole to, uh, uh, what's my man's name? Alan Stone. I have a very wide range of music. But I know when, you know what? I don't need to listen to that. I need to listen to this. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? I have enough self-control to know. You, you, you know what I mean? If you're depressed, the last person you want to listen to is who? She's a singer. Who? Who? Say it again. Jasmine Sullivan. If you are depressed, now I love Jasmine Sullivan, but if you're depressed, the last thing you want to listen to is, I'm not scared of lions and tigers and bears. I go, but I'm scared of, I'm not scared to perform at a sold out of fair, but I'm scared of, Am I the only one to think it's an impossible task? Why it no last? Is that too much? To Why do we love love? Watch this. When love seems to hate her. Oh. Shut up. Why do we love love when love seems to hate us? Who is love? Let's, who is love? God. Jesus is love. He doesn't have love. He is love. Why would you listen to that song? She's obviously hurt. And li listen, if Jasmine, if you just happen to watch this YouTube, I love you, girl, but we need to meet. We need to talk. Okay, let's have a conversation. Because God loves you, and you got, a, you got a great gift on the inside of you. You need to be up here on this day singing to these young people. Anyway, Mark 4, 16 and 17. Mark, and this, give, me, give me this in a King James Version, if you will. Mark 4, 16 and 17. I'm going to show you something. The enemy is coming after you like he is because he knows, and he's distracting you the way he is, because he knows that if you get a hold of this word and this word begins to take root, oh, it's a wrap. Watch this. Mark 4, 16 through 17, King James Version. It says, and these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. 17. Seventeen. I'm going to beat you. <laughs> they got it? We're going to have a good week this week practicing. Mark 14, 16, and 17. Got it? All right. And have no root in themselves. Now do this. Go from 16 to 17 because there was so much time in between. I need them to get it all together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Go 16 real quick. Well, I'll just use mine. All right. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. Verse 17. And have no root in themselves and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. What the scripture is showing you is that immediately trouble is going to come when you get the word, and it's coming for sake of the word. It's coming because you just got this word, so I want to attack you right now to make sure that you look at the word or, oh, that's just church stuff. They just do that in church. That's just for those church people over there. Okay? 
That, that, that's not real. That's not real. I mean, shoot, when you go to church, the people at church are fake too, right? That's not real. Oh, oh, Pastor Ann said, God loves you. Pastor Ann said, um, um, he's forgiven your past. Uh, God has forgiven your past, present, and future sins. Oh, you, 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 you. That's, that's just a, a fantasy. The Bible isn't real. Why don't you look at, uh, why don't you look at how the Muslims do? Or why don't you look at how the Buddhists do? Or how about just, just good vibes? Yeah. You know, I guess I got this back because I put that into the atmosphere and the earth thought that I should, I've never seen it. Well, I felt like we'd come to a time where you magnify the created over the creator. That bothers me. But that scripture is showing you that as soon as you get the word, as soon as persecution comes, as soon as trouble comes, we bend and we fold. But that trouble is coming to try us. Try your gangster. Try your belief. Try your faith. Let me examine and see if you really believe what you say you believe. Yeah, okay. She was at the altar, and yeah, she gave her life to Jesus Christ and different things like this. But now, as soon as they leave, I'm going to hit them with this, and I guarantee you she'll be right back with me, being promiscuous. Oh, 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 he got saved last week? Oh, I'll tell you what, we're going to have this happen this week, and, and, and he'll be back because, you know, that, that church stuff, that's just for at church. They don't want this to be a lifestyle. They want it to be a, they love the idea of God, but don't really love God. They love the idea of a savior, but don't really want a true savior. Are you following me? People who hear the word are primary targets for the enemy. He's always after the heart and the mind of people. Second Corinthians 4 and 4 tells us, how the enemy wants to keep us blinded. Blinded from what? From the light of the word. If I was to make this room pitch black dark, a lot of you, even though you know this room, you would still bump into things because it's hard to see in the dark. If you were to get up right now and walk around with your eyes closed, it'd be hard for you to really feel your way around. And the enemy wants you that way. And while he's doing that, you know how they had that game where you tie yourself up and you have to follow the sound? Well, the sounds that the enemy is making are the distractions and they're the things that he's trying to use to keep you distracted. Yeah, come this way. Come this way. Yeah, she's beautiful, right? Yeah, she's gorgeous. And she's giving you play. She gave you a number. She's all in your DMs. She's sending you pictures. Keep following. Keep following. She's sending you pictures. Oh, man. Oh, man. How did I end up with this sexually transmitted disease? Or, come on, follow me, follow me. My eyes are closed. I'm just going for the sound, any sound. See, that's why God says, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger's voice they will not follow. Because there's all types of strange sounds around you. And they're, they're all over here. So over there was, was, was lust. Over here is a temper. See, I've got a temper, and, you know, I've got to prove that I'm not to be messed with. So this person said this, boom, done. He's done, and I beat him up in front of everybody. So not everybody know I got them hands. Boom. Okay, I ain't get locked up that time, though. Oh, oh, this one wanted to? Boom, boom, boom. You knocked out. Oh, cool, 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 cool. Boom. Oh, 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 this one wanted? Boom, boom, boom. Boom. How did I end up with a bullet in my head? How did? Because the enemy's plan for you is to. And God came so that you can have life and have it more. Satan wants you blind so you don't understand the real from the fake. I use this example all the time. I could bring a fake two chains up here and he could look just like him, sound just like him. And y'all are right with, oh man, Pastor Ann had two chains up. Oh man. But then I bring the real two chains up and put them next to the fake one and all of a sudden it's easy to peep out the fake one, ain't it? Huh? Likewise, I tell you guys to get in your word and I tell you that the word of God is, is the armor that you put on because it's the only thing in this world that's truly real. So when fake things come and you put it next to what's real, it's easy to go, 
No, nah, that's not vibes. That's the Holy Spirit loving me. Does that make sense? I'm talking about a relationship, y'all. We've spent so much time fighting each other. Put the scripture back up. We spend so much time fighting each other. It says, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. He wants to keep you blind. He wants to keep you angry. He wants to keep you lazy. He wants to keep you at a point where you're 17, 18, 19 years old and you're depending on your parents to do everything for you and never trying to take a, 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 a step of boldness and walking in your, your, you know what, I'm crossing that threshold of becoming an adult. And all since I was 14, 15, 16, I wanted to be an adult. But now that I'm an adult, it seems like my parents are stepping back and they're making me more responsible for stuff. So I'm kind of teeter-tottering with it. But, 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 and you're trying to do this without God. You're trying to do it independently, and we were never created to be independent. We were always created to be codependent upon him. Is, it, is this making sense? James 3.16 is one of the weapons the enemy uses. James 3.16 It's crazy because I, even yesterday I was, I was uh, looking at some young men yesterday and I was looking at their interaction and uh, it's like, man, they don't even know that this is a spiritual attack and they don't even know that once they get on the same page and they on purpose make a decision to get along with one another, that they can be unstoppable and be a team that surpasses everybody's expectations and does great things. But it's because of this, it says, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. For where envying and strife is, what is strife? Who in here can tell me what strife is? Come up to the mic. Who in here can tell me what strife is? If you're at one of our fellowship locations, just put it in the group me. You can raise your hand wherever you are, and the leaders will come and uh, send your answer to me via group me. It'll come up right here on my iPad. What is strife? Say it again. Wow. That's deep. You heard what he said? He said, strife is love with no place to go. That's a perspective. Love with no place to go. Let me tell you what strife is. It's angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. Angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. It's conflict. Most people like to deal with uh, things on a natural level and it may work temporarily, but you always end up back in the same place because it's a spiritual battle and not a natural battle. But it's usually over simple stuff. Who told you to wear my jacket? I mean, it was just laying on the bed. You weren't wearing it today anyway. Yeah, but now you're wearing it and you're eating fries and you don't know how to eat, so you got ketchup all over my jacket, bro. Oh, bro, chill, man. Don't disrespect me like that. Ain't nobody disrespecting you. See, now this person over here is on defense because you coming at her or you coming at him in front of people. So when you do that in front of people, what is that person forced to do? Who knows how this cycle goes? What is that person forced to do when you come at them? in front of people. Huh? Say it again. They gonna clap back. Why they gonna clap back though? You put me in a position where I feel what? Embarrassed. Oh, you're not just gonna put me out where I feel like, you know, you're trying to make me out to be the soft guy. Now I'm soft in front of everybody. So now I gotta step up and be like, man, bump your jacket. Here, take your stupid jacket. In they head, they like, you went too far. Why did you do that? Now y'all gonna have to hit because you know how he is and you know how you are. But you like, on the outside, you look like, yeah, what's up then, bro? What's up then, bro? In your mind, you like, bro, why are you doing all that? Just calm down. But you can't even calm down because you're so moved by what people are saying and doing. Pastor Ant, why are you so passionate about this? You know how many friends I got dead because of this stupid 
strategy of the enemy? Dead, gone. These are people who I planned on having my kids call uncle, auntie in some cases. Because they couldn't just be like, oh, bro, you got, oh, my bad. Here you go. You got it. I tell, I tell a young man in Lions Den all the time, a lion doesn't have to tell anybody he's a lion. Just be. If a lion was to come in here, he ain't going to be like, you better run from me, I'm a lion. Y'all just going to do what? Run. <laughs> you understand? Just be, bruh. Anybody that's out there having to do all this, it's like, who you trying to prove that to? Us or yourself? You dig what I'm saying? So we get back in that situation where, you know, you having a bad day, you just try this person. Hey, bro, don't talk to me like that. What you say? You heard what I said. Ain't nobody stutter, bro, in front of everybody. Oh, no, nah, you ain't going to be trying me like that. I'm saying, so what you going to do? And then you up in this dude's face, right? And the dude know he can't fight, so he'll be like, oh, all right, you got it, homie. You got it, homie. Because in this day and age, people ain't taking L's no more. You know that, right? They not taking L's no more. They not taking getting embarrassed no more. What starts off is, oh, I punked him out in front of everybody, turns into the very next day. What, how do movies go? 12 hours later. You laugh, but you haven't been in mortuaries with me. When I'm with a parent and she's identifying the body of her son. Pastor, that's so gory. Well, I'm showing you the gory part. Now let me tell you the... The, 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 the less gory part, but it's all still a strategic plan of the enemy. You're friends with someone. It's harmony there. Everybody's cool. Everybody's getting along. <clears throat> and one of the dudes say something about your girl. Hey, man, your girl got a fatty, bro. Say what? I'm saying, bro, I mean, bro, you know your girl got a fatty, bro. Man, yo, 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 I really like her. Don't disrespect her like that. Oh, bro, you getting all serious for? What you getting all serious for? I just said she had a fatty. Is there something wrong? You should be glad that someone is saying your girl got a fatty, bro. What's wrong with that? Bro, I'm saying you just going to keep going? Yo, like, like what? Like, you don't know. <laughs> like what? That's, I'm not saying that. That's stupid. My son says it, and I'm like, I'm not saying that. But he says it all the time, so it's like in my head. So it's like, like what? Like, like what? It's like, get out of my head, Latrell. Anyway, it's like, bro, don't disrespect me like that. Bro, don't do that. Bro, don't, bro, bro. Like, like for real, don't, don't do that. And everybody's around is like, bro, you know, honestly, and you know how your friends like to play, right? So now your friends go, what they gonna do? They gonna jump in on it. Because they like, oh, we just what? Playing. But see, strife is... Angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. Hey, your girl was uh, choosing him last year. She did have a little crush on him. They was about to start talking. Man, bruh, this is my girl, girl. This ain't like, like no friend, nothing, bruh. This like, I love her, bro. Bro, I love her, bro. Bro, like what? Like, I love her, bro. It's like, bro, you, 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 you know, you got it, bro. You got it, bro. And then y'all come to church or go to a high school basketball game, and he really trying to lay it on thick. He see your girl coming, and you over here talking to your homeboy, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in your periphery, you see your homeboy over there with your girl like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like what? <laughs> so now you're furious. And something as simple as that have you taken somebody you've been rocking with since y'all was three years old and now that friendship is like over and you really have so much rage on the inside of you, you could break his neck. That's, that's on a, a lower level. So we went over the higher level and the lower level. It's every level. The enemy's job is to steal, steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to divide and conquer. If I can have you focus on anything except for the word of God, then I win. I want to show you something. Where is it? Um, let me see. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Give me a second, okay? 
Give me a second. This is... Matthew 16, 16 through 23, New Living Translation. Let's try that one. Matthew 16, 16 through 23, New Living Translation. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. 17? No, 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 New Living Translation. Let's go to the New Living Translation, guys. Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. 17. Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. 18. 18. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. And upon this rock, I will build my church. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. So you see here that Peter's name was Simon. And in this scripture, Jesus just referred to him as being very specific. He's special to the point where he changed his name to mean rock. And then he said, upon you will I build my church and all the powers of hell will not conquer it, right? 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. 20. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. 21. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that, th that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day, he would be raised from the dead, 22. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you, 23. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. Now, keep that scripture up. He had just changed his name from Simon to Peter. Now it looked like he calling him who? Satan. He's not talking to Peter. He understood that it was spiritual influence behind Peter. Let me finish. You are a dangerous trap to me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God point of view why would he call Simon why would he call Peter Satan because it wasn't Satan can you imagine look what he said go to, go to 22 this is all Peter said Peter took him aside again to reprimand him saying heaven forbid that you die on the cross heaven forbid that you have to suffer all of those things that you suffered Heaven forbid that you have to go through those things and then raise on the third day. Heaven forbid it. Can you imagine what our lives would be like had God's will not been done and Jesus not suffered all that he suffered? See, Jesus suffered what he suffered so that you wouldn't have to suffer it. He suffered depression. It says that he who knew no sin became sin so we could be free from it. You understand the love there? You see the love? But what Peter did was say, Lord forbid that that happens. And Jesus, in his very next sentence of, of changing his name to Peter, said, get behind me, Satan. He wasn't talking to Peter. He was talking to the spiritual influence. And he was also showing you guys how you should deal with things on this earth. When things come to you that go against God's will for your life, you should have enough sense to go, get behind me, Satan. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and just call people Satan. I haven't said that before, okay? I don't think you'd like how that turns out for you. But you have to know the word enough in order to know when somebody is telling you something that doesn't line up with the word. How can you know what doesn't line up with the word if you don't know the word? 
You see why praise and worship is important? See, in praise and worship, the word is getting into you. When you're sitting down in these seats right now, the word is, is coming out of me and it's getting into you. It's getting into your ears and then you'll find yourself thinking about it. And then it, you think about it long enough and then it gets down into your heart. And, and like I said in the other scripture, the, the, the trouble comes for the word's sake. Because it wants to rob you from believing in that word and it wants to keep you trapped and blinded into all of these things around here. But Jesus showed you, he said, no, get behind me. Your words are a trap to me. If I don't do, if I don't fulfill the will of God for my life, which is to die for each and every one of those people in 2020 that's living in 2020 with their hair pinned up to the side and they got their J's on and they got their hoodies on and they got their AirPods on. They, he knew this all the way back then when they was wearing bed sheets. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying to you? He looked at him, he said, get behind me, Satan. Or as the old folks would say, devil use a lie. <laughs> devil use a lie. It's not true. Somebody comes up to you and say, man, you'll never be able to do that. And then you're able to come right back and say what? Say what? Say what? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Oh, man, you won't, you won't, they, they, they told me this. They literally told me this. Oh, bro, you won't make it past uh, uh, 22, 23 years old. I shall live and I shall not die. That's the word. But if you don't know the word, what are you, what are you standing on? Will you be one of those Christians that come to church, hear a word, and you leave glad, and then as soon as the opportunity comes for you to work what you know, you forget, all of that stuff goes out the window. You got some young people that go, who thinks about Jesus when you're in the middle of, of, of trouble or you're in the middle of getting cursed out by somebody? Who thinks about Jesus? You should. Otherwise, why call yourself Christian? We call you Christian because Christ is supposed to be in you. Why have him in you and you don't benefit from his presence? What his spirit is, is liberty. It's freedom. Freedom from depression, freedom from hurt, freedom from destruction, and freedom from the wiles of the enemy, from the attacks of the enemy, from the strategies of the enemy, from the insecurities of the enemy, from the fear of the enemy. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Some of you just wish, some of you don't even know what a sound mind is because your thoughts just go all over the place. Every time something happens, you feel like, oh, oh I'm going to volunteer to say this because I just want to say something because I want to sound intelligent. Sometimes the most intelligent person is the quietest one in the room. Facts. Facts. Dr. Dollar raised me, and I've been walking with him for a mighty long time, for as long as I can remember. And he never seems to, he never ceases to amaze me as I watch him around tons of powerful politicians and presidents and dignitaries and going to other countries and presidents are on their knees, presidents of other countries are on their knees just trying to gather wisdom from him. And a lot of times I watch him in a room and things are going on around him and his silence speaks to the point where everything that's going on around him, he could just sit there and just, and all of a sudden the room will come quiet because they see Dollar ain't talking. Now that's, that, that taught me something at 15 years old. It taught me something. I don't have to always speak to seem intelligent. That corresponds with a lion doesn't have to always tell people he's a lion. Sometimes you just gotta be who you are instead of trying to be who you're pretending to be. God loves you more than you know. And I think it's time for young people and people all around to get to a place where you really start engaging in the relationship that's already there. He's in you. He loves you. He has plans for you, Jeremiah 29, 11. If you could put that up on the screen in a, in a uh, New Living Translation, I believe it's Jeremiah 29 and 11. 
talks about, you know the thoughts that I have for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, put that up for me. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and hope. I shared with you a few weeks ago that I don't care how bad things may seem around you, God's plans are still his plans. So just because the things around you aren't lining up with God's plans don't mean that you have to stop lining up with God's plans. Start picking up this word. Using it in every area of your life. You can use it on a basketball court to influence the rest of your team. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guess what? Your team will win. Nehemiah, you hear me? I say 14, you will win. You start putting some of that Holy Spirit on it, his soup on your natural, you'd be surprised what happened. I saw a team get beat yesterday so bad that I thought they was winning. No, seriously. I'm over there in the stands talking junk. Where's, where's Shirley at? Shirley back there? Where's, oh, Shirley. <laughs> Shirley. Did I not think we was winning that game yesterday? I thought we was winning. I was up in there like, yeah, we about, oh yeah, 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 that's an eighth grader, that's an eighth grader. And I, now that they told me that they lost, I saw, I'm like, why are they looking at me like that? We winning. And I'm going up to the players, dabbing them up, hey man, maybe next time, maybe next time, big dog. Reagan, good job, Miko, you know. As I get in the car, Trevor's like, dad, we lost. I'm like, what? I said, we lost that game? He said, yeah. Because I'm looking at him like, what's your attitude about now? Dad, we lost. I'm like, for real? I honestly, I promise on everything I love, I promise I thought we won. That's how bad they got beat. But this was an undefeated team. <laughs> this was an undefeated team. But once they start applying... <laughs> Once they start applying this word and start understanding God's word. See, I call them church boys because they're supposed to be different because of what they know. So I, I told them last night we're going to do a lock in just for the uh, basketball team. And we're going to take over the gym. We're going to spend the night in the gym. We're going to hoop all night. But then we're going to have time and we're going to go in on character so that they know. Is this as of right now, Lisa? This note that you put up here? For Dr. Dollar? They did birthday today? Because it's Tuesday. Okay, that's what's up, that's what's up. So I got 50 extra minutes? That's what's up. He ain't gonna use all the minutes. Anyway. <laughs> Is this making sense to you guys? You see how the enemy tries to come in now? I want to hear from you guys. Because... My wife started this program called Life Skills Prep, right? Baby, you want to come up here? She's so pretty, I just like calling her up here. Especially when she get a her did. No, up here, up here, baby, I want you up here with me. You leave that there with them. That's your cool walk? What? It's my walk walk. Did Nehemiah help you uh, break down yesterday? He helped you set up? Yeah, he, did. he did. Good job, Nehemiah. What about that 17U team back there? Was Jaden helping? Barely. Jaden was barely helping? Barely. What about Miko? Barely. Listen, we've got this program called Life Skills Prep. And what we want to do is try to prepare 11th and 12th graders for life. We teach you how to open up a bank account. We teach you how to budget. We're going to take you to a car dealership and show you how to go through the process of buying a car. Uh, we go over real estate things with you, uh, credit things. We'll have credit people come in and show you how to do your credit because these are things that we wish we had, you know, when we were 20. When we were 20, 
We was just kind of just figuring it out. So folks would say stuff. We'd be like, oh, for real? Well, maybe we should do that. And, you know, we was just, amen. Anyways, but that's what life skills prep is. But it's also to teach you guys <clears throat> that you're not in it by yourself. As believers, you have to start benefiting from what it is you say you believe. Does that make sense? As believers, you have to start benefiting from what it is you say you believe. So give me some situations that you go through where it's like, when I look back on it, I probably should have did this based off what Pastor Anthony is teaching. I probably should have said this. I probably should have did this. But instead, I did this. And now I need to know how to fix it. I want you guys, and I got my group me open, fighting over stupid stuff. What are they saying? Here, tell me. That's your phone. Whatever questions you have at the fellowship locations, just put them into the group. Me, it's coming right here to my uh, phone. But before we do that, I want everybody to repeat after me. I refuse to give others the power to control my emotions or control my day. I have the power to choose peace, to choose love, and to choose to be happy. Today, in Jesus' name, I refuse to let my circumstances dictate what I believe. I choose to live by faith and not by sight in Jesus' name. Y'all go ahead and make some noise for that right now. <laughs> Praise God. So I want to help you guys. Somebody, and you know how y'all go, y'all always start off real slow to come up to the mic, and then y'all wait for one person to get up, and then after that one person get up, everybody start coming down trying to have something to say. No, here's what I'm looking for. I want you to share with me a time where if you knew the word enough, you would have used it, but you didn't, and as a result, it turned out really bad and you need to know how to fix it. If that's you, I want you to come up to your mic. But I guarantee you, you're not the only one going through those things, all right? The mic is open. Who got Nobody? So y'all good. Make some noise if y'all good. That's a lie and a half and a truth ain't in you. Y'all trying to keep y'all business to yourself. And the thing is, people are set free by the word of your testimony. So if you out there, be honest and be real because somebody else could benefit from it. I know I can benefit from it. It just happened to me yesterday. So I got an older brother. His name's Jeremy. And uh, <clears throat> Jeremy's different, you know. He's only older than me by like nine months or something like that, maybe a year, right? And uh, so it's not like he's that much older than me, you feel me? And uh, yesterday we had something we had to do and we knew we had to do it and we had communicated and set up and established the time that we was gonna meet up and we was gonna make this thing happen, right? So Jeremy has this way of being naturally disrespectful. That's the best way I could put it. In word, where you at? What's up? Bro, where you at? I'm over here waiting, bro. You're supposed to have been over here. Dang, I ain't got time for your message. I said, bro, it's 3.30. We're supposed to meet at 4 o'clock. Man, get your butt over here, man. Blah, 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 blah. Then he shorted at me. Small guy. So I'm like, Jeremy, what is it you want me to do? I want you to drop what you're doing and get over here behind the admin building now. We got to go, and I got stuff I got to do. I ain't trying to be doing this all day. I mean, he was upset. So I'm like, okay. Now, you know, on Saturdays, my days is usually dedicated to my boys and the basketball team, running them around and picking them up, dropping them off, picking them up, putting them up, putting them down, putting them up, putting them down, right? 
So I say, okay, I call my oldest. I say, come out here and get your boy's stuff up out the truck. I got to go. He come out there, get the stuff. I drive over there. I pull up. Jeremy's standing there like this. I was laughing because he know. I pull up, unlock the door. He get in the car expecting for me to be with the stuff, right? He get in the car. Dang, bro, I been up here waiting. I'm like, man, my bad. You good? Yeah. I said, did you order the U-Haul yet? Because we're supposed to be, you know. No, I ain't ordered the U-Haul yet. I said, so you just been waiting. Bro, I ain't got time for your stuff today, eh? All right, bro. Come on, let's go get this rental, this uh, U-Haul. So we go there. Now, you know, I'm pretty experienced in this. So I'm like, you know, it probably would have worked better if you did a reservation. Now, normally, Pastor Ant would be like, bro, who you talking to? Ain't nobody back here you want to hit? <laughs> I ain't do that. I said, I'm going to do something different. I said, come on, bro, let's go over here. I said, it probably would have went better if you would have just did a reservation because sometimes they don't even have anything ready. We need a small truck. They may not have a small truck because that's usually what's rented out first. Bro, let's just go. All right, all right. You all right? Want some candy? Want some gum? No, I don't want no gum. <laughs> My kids laughing because they know their uncle. So we pull up, we go in, and I'm just composed and I'm sitting there. And uh, do you have a reservation? Jeremy go, no. Um, he goes, well, what size truck do you need? He's like, we need a small one. The smallest one we have is the biggest truck we own. That's going to be $387. He's like, okay, um, can I pay cash? No, it has to be a card. Oh, I don't have my card. Uh, and put on your card and I'll give you cash. I'm like, I'm not using my card. Bro, just put it on your... Calm down. I'm not putting it on my card. And then I'm like, wait a minute, I got one of my credit cards with me. Here you go, ma'am. Takes the stuff. We get the truck. We get in the truck. So I begin to not feed into where he is because he's expecting me to be at a place just like, just like I was expecting Constance to be at a place. I was expecting her to be at a place because I was what? Wrong. And when people are wrong and they come at you wrong, they're expecting you to do what? Respond how? Wrong. So I'm not telling you anything that I'm not currently practicing. Now, here's the thing. Did I want to be like, Jeb, you, you, you know I ain't scared of you, right? <laughs> you, <laughs> wait a minute. You, hey, wait, now, it wasn't no need for none of that. That's my brother. I love him. We get into it all the time. We've been fighting like cats and dogs since we was 11, 12 years old. But I love him. That's my brother. I could talk about him, but you can't talk about him. So about 10 minutes into the trip, how was your week? It was good, bro. It was good. How about yours? Man, you know. A little frustrating, a little frustrating, but it's all good, man. Got stuff knocked out, ministry moving, ministry grooving. Everything good, everything good. I'm like, man, that's what's up. So I started changing the subject, started talking about other stuff. And before you knew it, his whole countenance changed it. Now, here's what I know happened because I know him. Dang, he ain't even come at me like I thought he was going to come at me. I probably should have came different at him. Jeremy's never going to say, I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. Trell, is he going to say, I'm sorry? No. It's not going to happen. If you get a sorry out of Jeremy, it's like, uh, pigs are flying and hell is frozen over, right? But what he did was, are you hungry? Man, let me buy you something to eat. Oh, lunch on you? Oh, that's what's up. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Here, man, take this extra, too. Uh, here's the money for using uh, for the truck and everything. You good? Then this is what he do. He get out of the car. I right, love you, bro. Love you too, big dog. All right. But that situation could have went totally opposite had I did what? There's spiritual influence usually behind everything that is coming at you. 
the wrong way. It's not the person, it's the spirit behind the person. So just like Jesus looked at Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, he wasn't talking to Peter, he was talking to the influence behind Peter to try and get you out your way. Junior, how many times have you been on a court and somebody says something to you or accused you of doing something that you wasn't doing and on the court, you start arguing with them on the court. How many times has that happened? Huh? What do you say? Why are you using your Barry, your Barry, uh, your Barry Gordy voice? <laughs> Barry White voice. A lot. <clears throat> A lot? And what happens usually after you continue playing and that continues going? Who gets frustrated? How do you play when you're frustrated? Horrible. Trail. When somebody says something to you on the court <clears throat> and they accuse you of doing something that you're not doing and they start yelling back at you what you're yelling at them, what does that cause on the team? Huh? Division? And how do you play when you feel like the team is divided? You feel selfish? Huh? You play selfish, which means you don't want to you want to, every time you get it. Miko, come up to the mic, right there in the middle. Now make some noise for Miko. Miko, come on up here, Mr. Washington. Right there to the mic. What's up, Miko? You good? Everybody, this is Miko. Say, what's up, Miko? Everybody say, what's up, Miko? <laughs> so Miko plays on our 17U team. 17U team was undefeated until yesterday when I thought they won, but they really lost. Miko, what happens when somebody on your team yells at you to do something that you know you're doing already? How do you feel? You what? You what? You arguing? Like you're going back with him. What you going to say? <laughs> and, and I appreciate your honesty. But you're going to say a lot of stuff that you can't say in church. But usually when that happens, how's the rest of the team feeling? And how's the productivity of the team as far as, you know, you guys gelling, you guys knowing your plays, you guys not being frustrated. What happens to the game, which is the ultimate goal of a game is to do what? Win. What happens to that W? It turns into what? Appreciate you, Miko. Don't nobody want to lose. Who in here wants to lose? Raise your hand. That was a low jab. Don't be influenced. <laughs> it causes division. Because the 14U team definitely looks up to the 17U team. And instead of criticism, they would love to have, what would you like, Woogie? What would you want from the 17U team? Be honest. Help. help. How could they help you? Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. How could they help you? And you got to speak into the mic so the fellowship locations can hear you. All right, so first. Uh oh, look, you hear that voice? They give us some they give us Robert, and then after that, they can just encourage us, you know, empower us, like, we are leaders do. And then, you know, do that. What big brothers are supposed to do, because we're all a family, so if they just give us encouragement and stuff, you know, show us what we need to do to be as good as them. I see hands raised. Okay. Yeah, yeah, come on. Okay, go ahead. So to me, it's like, okay, we give you help. The help is giving you an opportunity to improve. But me talking to you and telling you, giving you encouragement, is only going to give you or tell you things that you already could have been doing if you just listened. Now, you bring up a valid point, my son. You bring up a valid point. Come up to the mic, Shane. You bring up a valid, a valid, a valid point, my boy. So 
a lot of times for you, and you tell me if I'm wrong, it's not what he's saying to you, but it's what? How he say it. So how he says it to you makes you feel like what? You get angry? Even though what he's saying to you is true? Yes, it's just like, it comes off as like, she's trying to down me or something, so I just get mad. Okay. So it's kind of like somebody, like, uh, who likes uh, steak and shrimp? What's your favorite restaurant? Fast food restaurant. Steak and shake. Chick-fil-A. Let's say Chick-fil-A. So somebody brings you. So check it out, check it out, check it out. Somebody brings you Chick-fil-A, right? They're bringing you Chick-fil-A. It's good food. It's brand new. Waffle fries, fresh out the grease. You know what I'm saying? A number one, just like you like it. Watch this. Top it up with a lemonade and watch this. And a vanilla shake. Oh, you, oh, you doing it big, big now, right? But they bring it to you. Watch this. They bring it to you on a garbage pail lid. You gonna eat that? He said, yeah, bro. Look, it ain't in no bag. It ain't in none of the cartons. They poured the fries on the garbage pail lid, and it's a dirty one. And they got the, the, the sandwich and everything. He, he said, I'm eating it up. Most of you, the normal ones, wouldn't even touch that food. Why? Huh? Because it's disgusting. It's not that the food is bad, but what they brought it to you on is... Likewise, sometimes we have to learn how to talk to each other. We talk to each other like without respect and nobody in here likes to be what? Raise your hand if you like to be disrespected. I didn't think so. So when you bring things to people, the Bible says, tell the truth in love. Tell the truth in love. So... Uh, okay, let's role play. Come here, uh, Shane. Well, no, yeah. Uh, mm, yeah, come here, Shane. Uh, come here, Junior. Come here, Trail, cause, just because. Because he, if, he if I don't call Trail, he'll cry. <laughs> Chill. I mean, like what? Like what? Like what? Come here. These are my young princes. You got Anthony Adams, you have Answer, Latrell Adams, you have Shane Avery Adams, right? Y'all make some noise for the Adams boys. Oh, Hurry up! He gotta be, you know what I'm saying? This is the one who just, you know, the world waits on me. <laughs> Junior, why are you in the mirror? I remember he said this. Junior, I'm like, Junior, why are you always in the mirror? Y'all get to look at me? How come I can't look at me? <laughs> What's wrong with you? You remember that? I got it on video. So check it out. Role play. Improv. We got some mics. Y'all pass the mic around. Check, check, check. Check, 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 check. Here goes some mics right here. Everybody get a mic. Everybody get a mic. Here's the situation. Here's the situation. You following? Shane had a sucky game. He went from, he went like 0 for 50 in the paint, which means he missed 50 layups. Could have had 100 points, over 100 points, right? You're his brother. You're his brother. I want y'all to keep it real, all right? Don't try to put no sugar on it because you think that's what I want to hear. Say to him what you would normally say, and then I want you to say to him what you would normally say, and go. You suck! <laughs> Who do you think you are, Trey Young, bro? You're not me. You freaking Okay, that's enough. Because even now, Shane is like, ooh, I hate when you do that, even when you playing. I know you mean it. Now, Junior, who'll be 18 in two weeks. Yeah, February 17th. That's like two weeks from now. Three weeks. Three weeks, whatever. What would you say? You was being frustrated on the court. You could have did it different, or you could have just kicked it out for a three point. Okay. Now, I'm going to put my hand over each person, and you tell me which one you think he would accept, okay? By, by a show of noise, okay? You ready? <laughs> okay. 
okay, okay. Why though? Come up to the mic. Why? Why? Uh, because he has positive thoughts. Okay, so he came at him the right way. Who else? Why would you why would you take what Junior said over what Answer said? Who else? Cammy, come on. Kimmy? Okay, so like, because Junior came in like a more calmer approach. The show just came at me like bam bam. Like, so it was like accepted. more compassion, more sure. you say yeah. say it in the mic. Disrespectful and I didn't like her. It it was disrespectful. Yeah, it was so bad. how did you feel with what Trail said uh, to okay. you? Like it was also end up into us arguing and probably end up fighting. Okay. Because it was uh, in my face. So why do you feel like you have to come at him that way? Um, well, I just feel like when I was younger, I had to got the same thing and it made me better because I looked at it as if okay, I'm gonna prove you wrong. Who'd you get that from? Whoa, whoa, whoa. So you got that from Junior? Yeah, my okay. So why don't you get that to him when you gave it to him? It's different type of people. He, um, certain people you, um, certain people you can bash and then they're trying to prove you wrong. Certain people you need to uh, lift up and God in the way, God into the way. Now, that sounds like a leader. Wait a minute. That sounds like a leader because as a leader, you have to know your audience. How I come to you may not be how I can come to you. So being able to know the difference and being able to do what? Adjust. So that now you're speaking this person's language. As a leader, I've got to know how to do that. You know, um, Brian, that's, that's my bro, you know. I can talk to him a certain type of way. I may not be able to talk to Jack the way I talk to Brian. I could probably say the same thing to Jack that I say to Brian, and Jack be like, I quit! <laughs> screw this! Screw this ministry! I'm out of here! <laughs> right? True. Based off what your older brother just said to you, how would you change towards your brother? Come. Come. <laughs> Remember I used to put y'all in the same t-shirt? We used to call it the, the friendship shirt. When they would argue, I would make them get in one T-shirt and one arm, his arm would be on the left, his arm would be on the right. I got a picture of it. I'm going to show it one day. And they was in the shirt like this. <laughs> Dad, can we get out the shirt now? No. Now it's time to go take a shower. No, Dad, no, please. It was hilarious. But face each other. Now, let's have a serious moment real quick. Because even in my family, there's healing that's needed all over the place. Now, listen to me carefully. There's healing that's needed all over the place. You see, there's greatness in him and there's greatness in him. And the enemy still has an assignment for your life, whether you're mindful of his assignment for your life or not. But it's still the same assignment to still kill and destroy. So what starts off as strife, which is a very arguing over fundamental things. It's not even a big deal. It ain't like he stole money from you. It ain't like he did anything like that, but just be honest, hold the mic up. When he says things to you like that, it's what? Uh, discouraging. What else? Hurtful. That's the main one. It's hurtful. And hurt people, ladies and gentlemen, want to do what? Now, I hear where you're coming from. When you say things to him, it's because it's what was done to you. I mean, I share with you, you know, how grandma was when I was younger. She was, you know, my dad had got locked up three days before I was born and she was bent on me not being feminine, okay? So I would fall and scratch my knee and it would be more like, get up. What you crying for? Stop crying instead of, you okay? Let's, rub, let's, let's make sure, you know what I'm saying? We wasn't really affectionate. She loved me, and I always knew she loved me, and I love her, and she always knew I love her. Well, sometimes she probably questioned it. But, <laughs> you know, that was our relationship, but that affectionate part wasn't there. With you now knowing that he really looks up to you. He looks up to his older brother, too. 
but he looks up to you. He loves the way you play basketball. He loves how you are with everybody. I remember, you, you know, if you feel like sharing, you can share, but tell him how you really feel about him. Now, y'all make some noise for him. Because one, it took a lot for him to say that in front of y'all. Y'all don't even understand what's happening right now. It took a lot for him to say that. So for him to sit here and say, he now he said it like that because y'all was here, but what he really meant by that is, I love you. Say it, say it, Woogie. See, there's the sweet Woogie I love. What'd you say, boy? Uh, I'm a good, you know, I'm good. Don't try to say it hard, bro. You light skin. Quit trying to be dark skin, bro. <laughs> say it. Uh, say it like Woogie. <laughs> say it. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> he love you. He really look up to you. So when you say what you say, trying to toughen him up, I need you to have enough sense to go, he's not built like you are but love him enough to figure out how he's built so that you can now build him up. All of a sudden, his dribbling gets better because he's watching you now and he can receive it from you. All of a sudden, his, shoot, his shots get better. All of a sudden, when you work out, he's trying to work out with you because he's not looking at you as what? An uh, enemy. He's not looking at you as the enemy. You know how hard it has to be to love somebody but not be able to really rock with them like that because they don't know how to talk to you? or they don't know how to treat you. Who in here can, can cope with that? Yeah, it's hard. It's like, man, I really wanna rock with you. I really wanna, man, I, I really wanna benefit from this relationship, but I just feel like you always disrespect me. The whole message that I preach today is trying to show you that it's spiritual influence behind that. I'm not calling him Satan because his intentions were there. But a lot of times when you're not built up in the word of God, it's easy for things that hurt other people's feelings to come out of your mouth. Now, be real with him. How you feel about him? Don't um. say it. I know what you was thinking. You so, um, I'm, be serious. I feel that if he puts his mind to a thing, he didn't really have a lot of potential in it. Um, I see stuff that he does, like the tech around the church, stuff like that. I even got jealous because I was like, dang, I wish I could do stuff like that. It's just like certain stuff that he can do that I can't. But I didn't realize at first that he glorifies what I can do when I was really getting jealous of what he could do that I couldn't. Wow. So I, I feel that anything he can, he can do anything he put his mind to. He's very dedicated. He just, he just, you know, he, he looks up to me in things that I wish I never had. So I, I, I really do appreciate you. I love you, man. You, you don't be something, man. Come on, come on, Julia, get in here, shut up, come on, come on. Give me a wrap around. Come on, wrap it in. Good. All right, y'all go sit down. That was good. That was good. Y'all make some noise for that. I cried. Watch this, 12 minutes later. Right, right, right. I'll take the moment. Um. One, one of the things as he was talking, just everything that he said, I kept hearing parents, 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 my parents, my parents. And I want you to take what you guys heard for those of you who have issues with your parents or guardian, to take that same scenario and you can apply that to your parent. You know, um, if you have challenges challenging communication with your parent yeah. or your guardian, you can apply that same situation. And a lot, of, a lot of students might say, well, my parent is the one that delivers the steak and shrimp to me on a garbage can. And yeah. I want you to realize and understand that there's still an influence. There's still an enemy out there that's there to steal, kill, and destroy. And there's, the enemy is still after your, your, uh, your peace. So when it comes through your parent and your parents delivering you steak and shrimp on a garbage can, I want you to be able to identify and speak to the spirit versus responding to your parent like, you know, what they're saying or how they're saying it 
is exactly how they feel about you. So they may be saying something that sounds hurtful and you're like, you know what, you're supposed to be my parent, you're supposed to love me. Understand that they might be responding out of hurt too. Because we get hurt. I'm a parent and I'm, a, I'm someone's daughter. Right. So I've been on both ends of the spectrum. Right. And I know what it feels like to be hurt by something your parents said, but then I know what it's like to be the parent to say something hurtful to your child. And I'm saying to you, on behalf of all parents, to every student in this room, we apologize. Yeah. Forgive us for not always having the correct presentation and delivering what it is that we want to say. Forgive us for not being able to present God's love to you in a way that you're able to receive it. Forgive us for kind of force feeding you because we want to see something. We want to see results. So out of fear and out of hurt from stuff that we probably dealt with, we respond to you in a way that you're like, I hate you. Yeah. I really, I remember with my father, I used to say, man, I wish I had a different dad. Like, you are so mean. I hate you. And I love her dad. Her dad is like so super cool. Mrs. I absolutely Jones. love my dad yeah. right now. My, my dad, like can't nobody tell me I, I don't have the best dad. But in that moment. In the moment. Yeah. I just felt like how he was doing it, was it was too hard. I felt like he was too harsh. But coming to understand that, you know, my dad grew up rough. Then he was in the military, so he was kind of, you know, dealing with some post-traumatic stuff that I didn't know right. about. And a lot of that kind of came out in his parenting. Now, I mean, he's like, one, like Anthony said, like one call and he's there. That's it. Rap. The thing about it is that when, when, and the whole purpose of this message is to expose the enemy for who he is. See, it was the enemy that was influencing her to cause that division because his plan is to steal, kill, and destroy. So he tried to steal, kill, and destroy that relationship between her and her father. Thank God he was unsuccessful. You see, he tried to destroy the relationship between me and my wife. Thank God he was unsuccessful. You know, we may argue now and stuff like that. I mean, every couple argues and have disagreements and different things like that. But if she's gone more than six hours, I am like. Where are you? What are you doing? Please. When are you coming home? Are you, are you almost done? What are you doing? She, last night, I asked her where she was at. She was like, I'm getting my nails done. I said, where? On 74. Why? I mean, what's up? I'll be home in about an hour. I was like, all right. Five minutes later, I pulled up and I was getting my feet done because I wanted to be with my wife. <laughs> but the enemy, had he had been successful, would have robbed me of that moment last night. You see how we're not mindful of the things that's on the other side of that attack? When you're able to see what's on the other side of the attack, and the thing is, you're only able to see it because of Jeremiah 29 11. If you could put that back up on the screen, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know the plans that I that I have for you. And if you could just keep that at the forefront of your mind. In the midst of that trouble and in the midst of that temptation to do opposite of it. Then you'll now count the cost when it comes to. How expensive is this going to be for me to go back and forth with this person in a negative way? When you know the word, it helps you put value on relationships. So now you want to see, well, how can I talk to my little brother differently? Because I do love him and I do believe in him. But, you know, immaturity and whatever else makes me want to down him every time I speak to him because that's what was done to me. So I figured it worked for him. But when I got God's word in me and I'm mindful of who God is and his love for me, then all of a sudden I'm trying to go deeper. All of a sudden, you know, me and Constance get into it and it's be like, it's easy for me to bow down because it's not my business how she treats me. It's my business how I treat her. And if she's thinking the same way, then we all right. I'm not worried about, oh, well, she had an attitude or she said this. She was disrespectful and she disrespected me in front of the kids and different things like that. And it'll be easy for me to go, oh, OK, baby, it's cool. Because now my kids get to see, oh, you see how dad responded? Normally he would say this or normally something's different. That's what happens when you involve God into the situation. 
Does that make sense to you? Is it making sense? Stand to your feet. So that's next week. We're in the um, stone? Yep. Okay. Listen, this is the point in service where we give you an opportunity to see what type of value do you put on your life? Are some of you going to continue to go back and forth with the enemy by going back and forth with people? Are you going to say, you know what? Man, I relinquish all of that. Man, I'm going to make it my business this week. And I'm going to try to do it next week and a week after and a week after and a week after to love people that's hard to love. I'm going to make it my business to be mindful of my response when people come at me wrong. I'm going to make it my business to walk in love the best way I can right now and at least start that process of being mindful of my tone, being mindful of not just what I say, but how I say it. I'm going to put more attention into that because I've been fighting people and my fight ain't with people. There's a spiritual thing behind this. There's a spiritual enemy. There's a spiritual attack. There's a spiritual influence behind this that knows what's on the other side of me passing this test. And doggone it, I'm going to pass it. If that's you and you're in here and you need help with that and you say, hey, I want to recommit my life to God and I want to make sure that I'm at a place that I'm able to commit to loving people, even if it's just for this week. See, it starts off just a week. And then after a while of you seeing it, here's the thing. The first time you do it may not be accepted right because they're so used to you doing and saying a certain thing. So what's key? Consistency is key. Keep doing it. Don't just do it and then, uh, oh, it didn't work. I'm done. You know, okay, okay, okay. Don't, don't do that, okay? Because you got to realize they've been used to you turning up. You've been turning up the majority of your life. So this process isn't going to be like an overnight type of thing, but it can be a right now immediate decision that if you commit to it and you share with your loved ones what you're trying to do, you could do it. Because at the end of the day, people do what they want to do. You understand what I'm saying? I could tell somebody to drop down and give me 200 push-ups right now, and they'd be like, I ain't doing that. Or I could tell somebody, I give you $1,000 if you do 200 push-ups nonstop. And the majority of you, even if you can't do 10 push-ups, will try. People do what they want to do. But it's usually when people put a value to it. Okay, well, let's try this. Put a value to how valuable is your success to you? How valuable is God's love to you? I need you guys to be mindful of this. So if you're in here and you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, come on up here. Don't wait. If you're in there and you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the evidence of speaking in tongues, come on up here. Don't wait. If you're out there and you say, Pastor Ann, I want to join one of the uh, ministries uh, in team ministry, come on up here. Don't wait. I appreciate that, homie. Y'all make some noise for him. Amen. Hey, hey, I need to go in that back room. What, how old are you? 17. 17? Yeah. Y'all good with that? That's the captain over there. Raise your hand. I can't see. <laughs> go for them. Go holler at them over there. Right. He want to join that basketball team. That's what's up. Y'all got to, hey, we're going to start posting the schedule on the Instagram, man. Y'all need to come check them out. Them boys been hooping, bruh. Antonio, they been hooping, bruh. They a whole new team, bruh, like for real. Uh, but seriously, if you're out there and you need prayer for anything, this is your time to come up here. Right now, we want you to turn to your left and to your right. Check with your neighbor, see if they need prayer for anything. If they do, pray with them. If they need help coming up here, bring them up here. Right now, they're about to play music. While you guys go ahead and talk to each other and make sure everybody's straight, go. Go get them. Sick them. If you need an offering envelope, raise your hand. We're going to have you give your offerings as you, as you leave today. We, got, we need offering envelopes up here. Here comes Sister Jackie. Keep your hands raised. Got one up here. Two right here. One over here. That boy getting skinny. Okay, then. Hallelujah. 
Hey, listen, I believe in y'all. I really do. Hey, baby girl, I ain't seen you in a minute. She like, is he talking to me? So I missed that event. There was an event that y'all had in Detroit. What, what was it, Detroit y'all wanted me to come to? It was Detroit, I missed it, how was it? You mad at me because I couldn't make it? I ain't seen you in a minute, you been all right? Y'all good? Y'all good? Come on, let's make some noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. You know what? Don't even clap your hands. Just open up your mouth and just hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord God, we give you praise more than we give our circumstances praise. You see how easy it is to, to, to yell about how frustrating a situation is? Well, when you can take that same energy and, and just give it to God and say hallelujah in the midst of troubled times, hallelujah in the midst of confusion, hallelujah in the midst of not feeling well, man, it just really just shifts the atmosphere, man. So as a result, just for the next three seconds, I want you to give God a radical praise. I just want you to scream to the top of your lungs on three. One, two, three, hallelujah! Hallelujah, hallelujah, give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got anything, baby? Um, just want to challenge you guys this week to really engage in praise and worship in your own personal time. I know a couple weeks ago um, when we changed up the praise and worship layout, a lot of you were like, I don't like the way you guys are doing praise and worship. And it's not about doing what you like per se, but it's about teaching you how to engage praise and worship in your own personal lives. So based off of the example we gave today, we're just using that for you to be able to refer to. But praise and worship can be injected in any area of your life. Absolutely. Um, and I want you guys to, to begin to do that. Um, and worship doesn't always mean you have to put on a slow song. Worship just can be you talking to God. It's the intimacy between you and God. Yeah. And the more you start to engage that, the more you just practice it. Begin to practice engaging in the presence of God and just watch how it changes things. That's, that's what I want to encourage you guys to do. Lastly, where are all my 11th and 12th graders? If you're graduating in the class of 2020 or class of 2021, okay, can I get you right in the middle? Class of 20, class of 2021. Right in the middle, right in the middle, right wow. in the middle. Wow. I just want to see who's wow. transitioning. Wow. Wow. Kaden, what? Wow. Kaden, what grade you in? 11. No way. Yes. Class of 20, this class guy. of 2021? Yes, okay, where's the class of 2020? Okay, where's the class of 21? You're going to walk, too. You're going to walk, too, without a doubt. Okay. Without a doubt. Uh, Latanya and Shirley, where are you? Latanya and Shirley. If, if someone can get Latanya and Shirley for me, please. Go. Come down front. Run down front, Miss Shirley. Run down front, Miss Latanya. Y'all got pen and paper? Or an uh, iPad or something? There we go. Okay. All of these young people in the middle are our class of 20, our class of 2021. Listen, guys, if we could bring the music down just a little bit. I, I want to, listen up, listen up. I want to encourage you guys to engage. First of all, we're gonna get your information. I'm encouraging you guys to engage with the life skills prep that Pastor Anthony uh, mentioned before and you hear me talk about it all the time. We are trying to prepare you for what happens after you leave high school. It's necessary. After you leave high school, life begins. So everything, all this, you know, your schedule and you know, everything your parents have you doing, life begins and you're making your own schedule. And sometimes it doesn't feel as comfy, like my G baby says, it doesn't feel as comfy as being with your parents and then telling you what to do. Some of you like, I can't wait till my parents stop telling me what to do so I can do what I want. Well, life hit different when you're doing it by yourself or on yeah. your own per se. You'd be surprised how many kids don't know how to use a debit card they don't know how to open up a bank account. They don't, don't know, know how, how to, to do, balance your checkbook. Don't know how to do none of that stuff. So 
we want to, we, we're literally going to take you guys to a, a car dealership and show you how to purchase a car. We're going to show you how to keep your credit right. We're going to show you uh, how to start the process of even looking for a home, let alone buying a home. These are things that we wish people would have taught us when we were getting ready to take that step into marriage. And we're going to make sure as a church that we show you guys how to do those things. For some of you, your parents may have already started. But for a lot of you, it's like, man, I wouldn't even know what to do. I'll call my mom and be like, mama, you got that account for me? Hey, hey, talk to this bank lady. Hold on, here come my mama. You're 26. Anyway. Anyway. So if I can get all of you, <laughs> all of my class of 20, class of 21, please follow them. Yeah. Follow them now. You just go off to the side. Follow them It now. won't take long at all. You're just giving her your information. And follow then I'm going to pray now. for the rest of you. Father God, I pray a hedge of protection over everybody in this room. I declare that they are whole, nothing missing, nothing broken. I pray a hedge of protection over their lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You are dismissed. Next week, we will be in the dome for the 34th anniversary.